Welcome to Chat with Sunlight, a homeschool podcast. I invite you to grab your coffee or tea and take a few moments to join us as we explore Sunlight, the curriculum, those who work behind the scenes, and the families that use it. So join us today. Hi, welcome to Chat with Sunlight. This week, I have invited Kathleen Cotter Clayton from Right Start Mathematics, and she is here to tell us about how Right Start began, how to use Right Start, and all the benefits. Kathleen, can you introduce and expand on yourself? Okay. I am like, you know, th- thank you for the introduction, Jonna. Um, I'm Kathleen Cotter Clayton. I am Dr. Cotter's daughter. I'm the oldest of the three of us. Um, I was taught very traditionally myself because I was the oldest. Well, I guess I still am the oldest. Um, uh, I was the oldest of the three of us. And so I was taught very traditionally the way that probably most of you were taught. My sister right behind me was taught the same way. But then my brother came in there and we all know as homeschool parents, what it's like sometimes you have that one kid or the two kids that just don't learn like the others. And they had him in a school and he was having difficulties, serious difficulties. So they moved him to a school. This was in Minnesota in the 70s. They moved him to a school that today would probably be like a charter school. And that charter school required that all parents donate so many hours to make this school function. Well, since my brother's having difficulties in math, And I didn't tell you, but uh, my mom, Dr. Cotter, is an electrical engineer. So she's one of those smart math people. She's a certified Montessori teacher. She's taught grades six, seven, and eight, and she has her PhD in mathematics education. But she didn't get that till a little bit later. So anyhow, my brother's having difficulties in math because she's an engineer. She's thinking, I got to help this kid. There's got to be some way to do it. So she started to create card games. And they weren't games like drill, drill, drill. It was games like, oh, let's learn this and let's try that. And it became something that the kids were like, well, this is really fun. And one of the teachers at the school said, you should do this for all the kids. She said, okay. And actually that was the beginning of the company. So she started it because of a need and it grew because the kids were flourishing with it. So that's how it all started. Um, Ironically, today, even though my brother did have difficulties in math, he is now an engineer himself and makes, well, a lot of money. He does very fine for himself. So he obviously got over his issues with math. Oh, very fun. And that you're right. A lot of times, great curriculum comes out of the need of necessity for serving our own children and figuring out how to help other children too. So when you use Right Start Math, So are we just playing games or how does the beginning levels look like? Right. That's actually an interesting question because it started with games and then she was continuing to work with the school. And then then she, at this point, she was also a Montessori teacher and she was looking at the Montessori materials and thinking, you know, there's just, it's close, but it's just not quite right. So she actually took some of the Montessori materials and from there created the AL Abacus, which we're now starting to also call the Cotter Abacus. So it's kind of going by two names right now. And this Abacus is what she was using for children with special needs. So she started to create some ideas and things to do with the Abacus. And somebody said, these are really good. You should write these down. And she went, what? Okay. And that was actually the beginning of the program. So she kind of continued her work using the abacus, teaching the children how to get a visual idea of the numbers and then practicing the manipulation of them with the card games. She went back to school and got her uh, master's in curriculum curriculum and instruction and taught grades six, seven, and eight and said, these kids, they are struggling. We need to do something different. So she kind of went back to her, her roots with the elementary math and got her PhD in mathematics education with an emphasis on brain research. And out of that came the Right Start Math program. She only intended to write first grade as part of her doctoral dissertation, but the school that was using it as part of her research were like, this is awesome. We need to have more of this. And then she wrote second grade and third grade and fourth grade and fifth grade. We adapted it for homeschoolers and now it's got the levels. So if you've got like level B, that is considered first grade with a lot of second and some third. So we don't really care about the grades. We care about what the child can do. So let me ask you real quick. My brain went into this. 
a lot of times moms are looking and they know there's generally a spiral um, approach or a mastery approach. Real, which way is right start math? Yes, we're spiral. No, we're not. Yes, we're mastery. No, we're not. We like to think of ourselves as application. Okay. So I learn something. So for example, what makes a five? Four and one, three and two, three and two. That makes a five. And so I learn it. I practice it with card games. And then I go and I apply it. So I learn about nickels and pennies and dimes. And I learn about clocks. So it's an application for what I've learned. It's not just a case of, oh, all right, four and one is five because mom said so. There's a reason for it. So it's spiral because you're constantly coming around and hitting the same information. Four and one make five. It's mastery because we're playing the games. But again, more importantly, it's an application. It gives the children a reason to want to know their facts. No, oh, I was going to say, because that would be something that most moms don't approach. I mean, they think mastery right. or spiral and right. thinking kind of application both. is not their terminology. Right, right. Yeah, it's kind of both. The so other how, thing, what, let me, if I can interrupt a quick second, the one thing with mastery, one problem with that is if I'm stuck, let's, let's just do multi, addition is usually pretty easy. Let, a lot of kids get stuck in multiplication. And if I am over there and I'm working on my eights, my multiplication, and I'm stuck and I can't master it. So many situations, people will just stop. The kids have got to learn their facts of eight. They've got to learn their multiplication. Well, the kids will never have an op opportunity to grow. Mm -hmm. um, I like to think of it this way. If you and I are best friends and you say something or I say something really rude to you, you're like, oh, I can't believe she just said that to me. If I keep repeating it to you over and over and over, you still don't get it. Pretty soon you are fed up with me and you are leaving the building. But if you step away and you go and talk to your husband, you go talk to your best friend, you go talk to, you know, somebody else. They're like, they can explain it to you in a different way. And you can be like, oh, oh, that's what she meant. Oh, yeah, I do do that. So you can get that feeling. And that's the problem with mastery is I keep saying the same thing over and over and over. And you have no other way to look at it. Whereas with Right Start, we'll show you to do it one way, another way a third way, not because we're trying to confuse you, because we're trying to give you different ways to look at it. So you can kind of approach it from the left and the right and the top and the bottom so that if your kid didn't get it on the left and the right at the top, oh, that's what they mean. So we give different approaches, which is not really what mastery does. Again, it's more of an application of it. If that makes some sense? That makes great sense. I, was, I say most kids, you have to know it takes time. Sometimes it's one-on-one -on -one tutoring or being the mom to realize, oh, this kid needs the hands-on. You know, there are some kids like you don't need manipulatives to because they, it clicks in their brain and they don't need it. Right. There are some, you need to have all the manipulatives or M&Ms to get them to start doing math because you apply it. If I had five M&Ms and I gave you two, how many more, you know, how many M&Ms right. do I have? And then how many more do I have? Because that one and step. It's also, that he... another, it's also another approach. Right. So again, if I didn't get it the first way or the second way, I can get it the third way. Right. So for example, did you know that there's 11 different ways to subtract four digit numbers? No. Most no, people yeah. are like, really? I thought there was just one. No, you can do it from the right. You can do it from the left. You can do it all these different ways on how to do it. And again, some of them aren't very efficient. Some of them personally, I don't like. I think they're kind of silly, but I don't like them. That doesn't mean that my kid doesn't or your kid doesn't. It's, right. you know, I, I also kind of equate it like sports. You know, as good as parents, we take our kids to gymnastics and figure skating and rollerblading and rowing and swimming and whatever. And some kids, you know, it's like, well, he shouldn't go swimming. He just drowns. Okay. We're not going to have a swimmer here, but you keep trying different ways until you find the way that works. So it's the same thing in math. There's not just one way to do it. There's multiple ways to do it. And we show you different ways and some kids aren't going to like one way. Super. That's fine. We, but we give them more than one way to do it. So it's not just do it this way or you're done. We right start math is still going to say two plus two is four. Oh, no absolutely. matter how you do it, 
right. two items for the another two items is always going to be four. Yes. We're not saying now we can say two plus two is 20. No, 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 absolutely not. And that's one thing that sometimes people get a little bit excited with the, with the new math way of doing things. It's, and, and I've never seen it in a, in a curriculum, but two and two is always four. I don't care how you dress it up. I don't care how you turn it inside out. It's still four. I can come at it different ways, but it's still going to be four. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It's non-negotiable. Thank you. Thank yes. you. <laughs> so how many levels are there now with Right Start Math? Okay. Good question. We have level A, which is kind of a kindergarten with a lot of first, some second. I like to say level A is kind of for our brand new, never been used children. So those are your, maybe your really bright, happy, excited, you know, two and a half, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, you know, again, they're brand new, never been used. You're five-year-old who would be a kindergartner, a six, maybe is a little delayed or a seven, a child who's having some, some issues, some learning challenges, whatever it might be. But again, it's for a new child who's never seen and done math. Level B is going to be your kind of a first grade. Those would be for the kids who have completed um, kindergarten, a solid kindergarten program, whether it be ours or somebody else's. So level B is going to be kind of a first grade with a lot of second, some third. Level C, D, D is going to do multiplication with some fractions, um, measurements, bunch of different things in there. E, so level F is going to get into um, multiplying and dividing fractions. Um, it's got some higher level percents and decimal things. Then level G and H, which are going to be kind of your middle school. It's going to be kind of your sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and that's G and H. That is really exciting because you basically give the lesson book to the kid. So it's written to your kid. You give it to the kid and basically see in the spring. Now, it's not that simple, but it's for the child to read themselves. They read the lesson. They do the worksheets. And then you have the solutions. And the solutions will walk you through how to find the answer. Level G gets into some really cool stuff. Um Again, the beginning part of it is they're learning how to teach themselves, and then they're starting to apply it. Uh, in level H, there's actually a full section on trigonometry. Remember sine, cosine, and tangent? I know when I learned that in college, that was something they developed just to torture me. They did a lovely job. It was ugh. But then when I saw it in level H, I'm like, seriously? That's trigonometry? Oh, that's cool. I can see why people use this because the way it was explained. Um, another thing they do, and this is back in level G, is the children actually develop, well, not really develop their own formula, but they kind of develop the reasoning behind the formula for the area of a circle, pi r squared. And the way it's done is really cool. Um, they also work with the Pythagorean theorem, not just a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but it's y, and they get to draw it and show it. Level G and H, actually uses geometry as the platform for learning. It's not about geometry. It's about middle school math, but it uses geometry as a way to explore things. And it okay. really shows the beauty and the joy in math that most people are like, wow, those are not words you use with math, but you do. And it's absolutely beautiful to see some of the things that the children can develop. I was going to say, we, in sunlight, we have our history of science. And one of the first books walks you through how circles were first made, you know, when your goat was on its <laughs> stake and it would chew in a circle, you know, how to draw a circle and yes. how to do, but there's a lot of interesting facts in those first few books that I'm like, oh, I get that. I get exactly. that. And we so, need our kids to see that because math is so cool. There's just so many neat things about it. And so often it's just like, oh, I got to memorize the multiplication facts or, oh, I hate fractions. No, there's so many neat things. And that we show in the Right Start Math curriculum. So let me ask you, if I had a child bringing them out of the school system, and let's say they're in the fourth grade and I'm bringing them home and I really want them to use Right Start Math, do I start with A or do I take a placement test and... Very good question. Where we're going to go. 
Yep, we have a placement test. And part of the reason, remember when I was listing the levels, you know, A, B, C, D, we did that intentionally because there's nothing worse than bringing your fourth grader home. You knew they were struggling. And, and we do the placement test and it's like, I'm sorry, Tommy, you're going to have to go into second grade math. Well, why don't you just kick him? It'll be a lot more fun. So instead, we put him in level C because he's cool or level D because he's a dude or level E because he's excellent. So we go with the level to where their math brain is. I don't really care how old they are. I want to know their math brain. So let's just take Tommy. And Tommy, for example, he's got his addition down. He's a fourth grader. Subtraction, he's got. Multiplication, ah, wow, Ben's struggling. I mean, he kind of gets it, but just trying to figure it out. I'd probably put him in level D. Level D, we would consider, again, he level D because he's a dude or level D, be, you know, it's a girl. If it's a girl, it's because she's a darling, you know, whatever. It's just level D. But I look at that and, and, you know, looking at the actual grade level, I would consider that third grade with a lot of fourth. Remember, Tommy's a fourth grader with some fifth. But you can't build on what isn't there. I mean, just because Tommy's a fourth grader doesn't mean that Tommy should be doing X, Y, Z if he still can't do his multiplication or has no idea what a fraction is. So we go with what they know rather than their age. Right. Now, one other thing, and you I don't know if you're familiar with this, John, we have a new series that's just come out. It's called Right Start Tutoring. No, and that is, is okay. Fun. Yep, that is new. Um, it's a derivative of the Right Start Math program, but what it is is we kind of, peeled out just the high points. So the first one, Right Start uh, Tutoring Number Sense, does just addition, subtraction, up to four digits with caring. And it's done in 50 lessons. And here's the part that the kids just hate. There's no worksheets. Not one. I, I know. The look on your face is like, huh? Yeah, there's no worksheets. So they might be writing down a problem, but they are writing it. Okay. And then they're going to play card games to practice. So the card games is going to develop the fluency. There's a lot of word problems in there. And for anyone considering the number sense book, we tried to put little, what do they call them? Easter eggs in there, little, little it, tidbits of information, little tidbits of things in there. Like there's, I'm not going to tell you what they are because there's some really cool ones in there. Just little things. That if you catch them, they're funny. If you don't catch them, that's fine. But it's done in 50 lessons. And it's intended for a child who's at least a year, at least, but probably two to three years behind where they should be. Because if a child's only one year behind, I'd rather see them go in the Right Start Math program. If they're two years behind or three years, we don't have time to go back and do the full curriculum. So I would drop them into number sense, where again, we're going to do addition, subtraction, up to four digits. And then when they're done with those 50 lessons, that's so going to take you roughly two months. Then we can put them back in the Right Start Math program. Or if they're still way behind, again, two years or more behind, we can put them in the Right Start Math, or excuse me, Right Start Tutoring Multiplication Division book. Okay. There's a Right Start Tutoring Fraction book. And so it kind of depends on what the children need. And then you can use these tutoring books to kind of pull them up to speed real fast. It kind of strips out. I mean, there's still fun in there, but it strips out some of the cool things. Like in the beginning when I was talking about two and two make four or, you know, th four and one make five. And then you've got your nickels and your money, your, your um, excuse me, your money and your clocks. That is stripped out because we're only looking to get addition and subtraction done. Okay. So we do strip out some of the fun. The The learning part of the fun is still there with the card games, but some of those additional connections aren't made because either the child doesn't have the time or they're old enough because they're already two years older than we would normally be teaching this, two years or more. They've already made some of those connections or because they've been on the planet longer, they'll make the connections themselves. So, yeah, so Right Start Tutoring is a new series and people are really liking it. When you finish level G, G mm -hmm. or H, H. H, have to know my alphabet. Yep. <laughs> um, at what, what level? I mean, what would happen after that? Okay, good question. So you're done with G and H. That's your middle school. We do it in two years. Most people do it in three, some two. It's kind of all over the place. But when you're done with our H, you are ready for high school algebra. Okay. So not, we do you're have not going to jump into pre-algebra. 
go straight into algebra? It, well, it kind of depends because every curriculum is different because a lot of algebra programs have a pre-algebra component in there. Mm -hmm. We have like the last two, they're not really called chapters, but I kind of call them chapters, Two last two segments in H are pre-algebra. Okay. Now, is it a full program that can take you into XYZ program? I don't know. I don't know what XYZ program is all about. So I can't really say, in in theory, you should be able to go from H to algebra. But Does that algebra program include a pre-algebra component? But we definitely don't need to spend a whole year doing algebra, right? pre-algebra, excuse me, pre-algebra. So probably the best word of advice is, Whatever you pick after Right Start Math, go ahead and take their placement test to figure yes. out straight into algebra. Maybe it's more, right. maybe it's less, depending on where they bring right. their pre-algebra. Right. Yep. But I agree yep. with you. There, are, Everyone's algebra is not equal. Right. Exactly. We have ones that we recommend, but in the interest of the podcast here, you'd have to call me to find out what we recommend. <laughs> and there will be links, so don't worry. Yes. Don't worry. So... You, I was going to ask you if you had used it, but obviously you didn't because you're the eldest of yes. all the kids. I wish, yep. You didn't, you did not get experimented on in that way. You, no. it was your younger brother that got all the. Well, actually kind of, because my brother has dyslexia. So mom was always very careful to make sure that when she introduced a new card game to my brother, that it was a good game. So my sister and I vetted all the games. So in the summertime, every day, you know, you'd get up, you'd eat breakfast, you'd play some card games, then you could go out and do whatever with the horses or swimming or, you know, whatever it is we were doing for the day. So we played all the games. And then when my kids were, when I started working with my kids, they were actually before the Right Start Math program. And Dr. Cotter has some previous work. It's called Activities for the AL Abacus. And I use that to teach my kids. So they were, again, they were before the Right Start Math program, mine are older. So I was, I was going to say, I actually used the activities for that yep. AL Abacus for one of my kids. And when I was introduced to Right Start Math, I was like, I kept on looking at it thinking, that looks just like my Abacus. Yeah, because <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same. But, and I would have shown mine, but mine, like I think I told you previously, I had a dog <laughs> chew one or two of the beads off. So yes. we just have it for fun now. So yes, yes. But, Save it for the grandkids. That's right. They can play with it and learn still, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, Kathleen, if you had advice to a mom that's just worried about her kid and you were telling them, okay, they're going to join and they're going to do right start math. What would one thing you would tell them to alleviate some of their fear? I, I'm actually going to give you two things. One, okay. play the games. They're not a reward. They are part of learning. The games are like hugs. You can't overhug your child. You can't overplay the game. Play the games, play the games, play the games. Um, dad comes home, have dad play the games. Have the olders play with the littles. Um, if you run out of time or kids, have right hand versus left hand. Play against the dog. Play the games. And your family can modify the rules to fit your family, but play the games. Because I don't really care about the rules. I care about the fact that you're using your math. And the, some of these games are really fun. Even for myself, as somebody who struggles a little bit with my multiplication table, I know it's kind of embarrassing, but as somebody who struggles, I can even tell like when I play games with my grandson, I get better, even in five minutes. It's amazing how those games make a difference. So they're not a reward. They are necessary. They're like hugging your children. You got to play the games. Right. Number two, if you decide that you, that Right Start is for you and for your family, this, this will benefit everybody. You are part of our family. So if there's a question, you look at something, you're like, I have no idea what they're talking about here. Call us. In the back of the book, there's a toll-free phone number. We did not put that on there to waste ink. We put that on there so that if you have a question, you call us. If you need to call me 16 times in one day, okay, I might not be totally thrilled with you at 4.30 in the afternoon, but I'm going to help you because we want this to be a success for your child. Therefore, it has to be a success for you. So what can we do to help you help your children? And I don't care if you're using the tutoring program, the mathematics program, you're using another program and you just pulled our card games in. 
That's fine. Call us. That's what we're here for is to help you. And again, it's unlimited help. So let us know what we can do for you. Oh, that's so encouraging to know that you guys, I like that you guys are available for all the moms. Um, And if I can add one quick thing with that too, I don't care where you purchase the program. So you don't have to be like, oh, they didn't buy it from Right Start. They bought it from Sunlight. No, you are part of our family. You bought the Right Start program from Sunlight. You call us. Right. Now, you can call the Sunlight people if you want to. But personally, I'd call the Right Start people because we know what we're doing. Not that you guys don't. That to come out right. You know what I meant. <laughs> well, <laughs> but we it's can better to go to the, the source nuances. to get the answer than yes. the middleman. Exactly. Exactly. So buy it from Sunlight. Call Right Start. That's right. And Sunlight has mentors on their app and stuff that a lot of them are math, mathy type of mamas. If you're listening and you're on the app and you have questions, they can help. But by all means, if you can get hold of Kathleen or any yes. of the staff there at Right Start, correct? why not take advantage? So, yep. Absolutely. Now, Kathleen, I have one more thing that came up to my mind. You were talking about games. Years ago, you came and did training with us mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you introduced us to the app on the, the game on the app. Yes. Do you still have that? Yes. Yes. Right now we have three games, three, four, three games, three games on the app. We have, um, it's called go to 10, okay. which is working on your facts that make 10, you know, nine and one, two and eight, three and seven. So we have go to 10. We have a fraction war game, okay. which, which uses, uh, there's four different levels and it goes from very easy using just the halves, fourths and eighths comparing them a war game you lay down two cards whoever hires the higher one and it goes all the way up to including uh percentages and then the third one is a corners game that is i have to apologize in advance very addicting my apologies i only allow myself to play it on airplanes because you have to get off the airplane so you have to quit playing the game anyhow it's very addicting kids love the corners game that is one of kids absolute favorite games is the corner games I was going to say, I think I have the corners game downloaded on my phone. Yes. Because you said the same thing. This is addictive. Yeah. You, you want to be precious with your time or. Yes. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, okay, I'll get that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun one. It is fun. It is fun. And that is one of, I'll pull up and play when I've got, unli- not unlimited time, but time to. More time. Yep. More time. Yep. To just, and that, the name of that one is called Super Corners. And that puts in a component of both multiplication and addition. Okay. Yep. And those can be found in both app stores. Yep. Both Android and Apple. Correct. Great. Um, Kathleen, I have enjoyed our chat. I am, I, part of me wishes that I had done more right start math with my kids, but I think my kids may have been just on the curve. Yep. Probably the same age as mine. Yep. I missed out. Um, Kathleen, if ever we could have you back, I hope that you would be available so we can ask all the questions. I Um, would love to. Thank you so much. This has been this has been delightful. It is delightful. And you can find Right Start Math usually at homeschool conventions. If you have not put your hands on it, look up your local convention. I know we often try to see where they're at when we're at a convention so we can direct people to them. Um, Again, sunlight goes to conventions as well. I just came back from Tennessee. So it was, and you guys were around the corner from us. Yes, yes, exactly. That was a good convention. It was very good. Well, Kathleen, thank you very much. I look forward to chatting with you another time. All right, that sounds good. Thank you for having me, John. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us today. Do you have an idea for a podcast topic or do you want to chat with Sunlight on an upcoming episode? Email us at connections at sunlight.com.